All right, so let's go to Solution Explorer and I'm going to add another folder and I'll call it context. And in it, I'm going to add another class and this one I'll call event context. So this is going to be our DB context, a class that will process the database requests. So our class needs to inherit from DB context class, which of course we need to bring in the namespace and it's in Microsoft that entity framework core. And when I hover over it, you can see that DB context instance represents a session with the database and can be used to query and save instances of your entities. And that's precisely what we want. We want to query the database and either create, delete or update entities as well. So first let's configure it because we need to have configuration for our DB context so it knows what database it's going to be using and what the connection string. So I'm going to create a variable and it's going to be private because it will be used only in this class and I'll make it read only because we want to only instantiate it when the class is first created as an object and then we only want to use it but not set it. So we only want to be available to get and not set. That's why I do it read only and it's coming to be from I configuration. And we need to bring in the namespace for it and that's the microsoft.extensions.configuration. And configuration represents a set of key value application configuration properties and one of them that we will be using is the connection string. So let's name it and I'll name it underscore since it's private configuration. So we have the variable and now we need a constructor and bring the I configuration service into it. So we'll have the I configuration, which I'll call configuration. And there will be another variable, which is going to be DB context options which I will name options. And this is a class that contains two methods that we will be overriding. One is on configuring and one on model creating. And that one will be used to seed the database with some sample data when we first run the project. It's not really necessary, but I like to have few data to work with when I'm actually querying the database. And I don't want to create it manually going into the tables and typing things in, I'd rather have the entity framework to create it for me. So we're bringing in the DB context options in order to do that. So now we will pass the options into our base class. So we'll go to base and pass the options to it. And that's our constructor. So here in it, of course, we will set the configuration variable. So underscore configuration to be equal configuration. We don't do anything with the options because we passed it into the base class. So that's our DB context, but of course, that's not gonna do much yet. What we need to do now is to set up DB sets. We have four classes that we want to set up tables for, so we need to create DB sets for each. So I'm going to create a public DB set and DB set is an object that derives from the DB context and we need to tell it what set of data we want and we want it for each of our models. So this is going to be for the event and it doesn't know where it is. So we have to bring in the namespace using comedy events that models and we'll name it events and it's a property. So get and set. And we can create another property of DB set for the next one. And this one is going to be for the comedian, which I'll call comedians. I want the name in plural because this is a DB set of all comedians and all events. And it's going to be next one for the gig as well. So it's going to be DB set of gig type and I'll call it gigs. And finally, 
we'll have a DB set for the venue. And I call it venues. So DB set will be used in our DB context and that will be used in order to query the database and also to save new records or delete records as well. So next let's do the DB context options methods for the on configuring and on model creating.